Hello and welcome back to the adventure down the Icefield Parkway and from the glaciers everyone. We got two camps to check out today, one being in Banff National Park coming up. But first we've got to go find a standing dump because we have literally zero water left in the RV after camping in this parking lot here. So let's hit the road. Alright, so we just stopped here at the Wilcox campground. It's just past the Icefield Center where we just left. And lucky for us, we found a sandy dump here. So I found out that there was a sandy dump here online. First of all, we were worried that the campground was going to be closed because even though all of the campgrounds say that they're open online, like so many have been closed that we drove past. I think only one has been open. We were first of all worried that it would be closed and we wouldn't be able to get to the sandy dump. And then we were worried when we drove in here that there actually wasn't going to be a sandy dump because there was no signs when you turn off the highway and there normally would be. And when you entered the campground, there was also no signs like saying where the sandy dump is. But luckily we found one here. So good news for us because we're literally bone dry with water in the RV right now. Kind of a scary situation for me personally, but we got water. We were able to dump our tanks, life is good. So basically, if this sandy dump wouldn't have worked out for us, there wouldn't be another one until you get to Saskatchewan Crossing, which is just like, I think a small little town with a gas station that is a bit further down the Icefield Parkway. And it's actually past where we're going to be camping tonight, where we have a reservation. So we would have had to drive all the way there, get to that gas station to use that sandy dump. And they actually charge you $20 to use the sandy dump there unless you fill up with $20 worth of gas and then it's free. But the thing is, we don't need gas and we actually read online that they mark up the gas there like 60 cents per liter. So I don't even want to like pay that for gas. So luckily we found the sending up and we're good to go. Wow, the weather is so much better down here in like the valley compared to up like beside the ice fields where we were before parking, uh, camping in that parking lot. Like it got so cold and the wind was so cold, but okay, last night we didn't run the generator because we didn't want to be those people. So we had run out of battery last night and so we couldn't run the heater at all throughout the night, which was probably a really bad call because we woke up this morning and it was 48 degrees Fahrenheit in our RV. We were freezing cold and when we woke up we just had to run the generator right away anyways and turn the heat on but dang it's so much nicer down here. The sun's shining. Like I still want to wear a sweater because it's a little chilly-ish but it's beautiful here. So the Ramparts campground here is actually on the Banff National Park side of the Rocky Mountains now. We have a campsite booked at Banff National Park tomorrow that we're going to check into and visit then. And then after that we're going to move sites and go to a different one that we're at for four nights. But while here at the Ramparts, we weren't able to reserve a riverside spot. There's a few spots right on the river but they got taken right away of course. But we found a nice little nature path and we're going to go check out the river that I think this campsite's known for. So, 
river is super beautiful. It's got that nice milky glacier color too, probably because of the silt and all the erosion. But look at this campsite on the river. This is campsite number 37. There's the Milky River and look at how big this campsite is. Holy moly. If you ever come to the ramparts, campsite 37 is my recommendation for you at least. So while at this campground, I managed to get a haircut out of Alicia. It had been over a month and my hair was definitely due for a trim up, but back to being my normal self and feeling my normal self instead of having that long hair. Always just feels better having my hair cut while RVing. And then we were gonna do burgers and little veggie packets on the barbecue here while out here. And we figured use the outside barbecue, run our propane hose like we've done before, how we have that little hookup where you can use the propane from the RV to this portable little barbecue. But sadly the regulator portion that would normally click in here, looks like it snapped off after the last time we used it. We had just organized the hatch recently and it was fine, but I guess on our last little bit of trips, broke off. You can actually see on this part right here where the castings broke off. So sadly that's out of commission. We're gonna put our little veggie packets Alicia already nicely prepped into the fridge because checking into Banff tomorrow will have hookups. And then we can use the oven because she figures it'll take about 40 minutes in the oven to cook. And it's probably not worth using the generator 40 minutes to cook a little bit of vegetables. So save them for tomorrow and I guess figure out what we're gonna do for dinner from here. Even though burgers and veggie packs was a no-go, Alicia's got us some dumplings fried up, a little bit of rice, edamame, going for Asian theme tonight instead, and we'll still get those veggie packs tomorrow, mark my words. <laughs> Good morning, guys. All right, so it's time to check out here of the Rampart Creek Campground here in like the Icefield Parkway, and we're actually heading to Banff National Park. We'll be driving through Lake Louise first, so that's gonna be actually our first stop. And if you've never been, it's actually amazing. I, I'm pretty sure like most people when they think of Banff, they think of Lake Louise. It's just like that iconic blue-green lake with the mountains that everyone really thinks about. So really excited to stop there. We're gonna have our lunch there and then go and check into our campground. So we just got to Saskatchewan Crossing here. We wanted to see this famous marked up gas price. They don't display it anywhere on the roadside and they're a full service station so they actually come out and pump it for you and everything so i just rolled up and wanted to quickly read the gas pump and just see how much they were charging we do have over half a tank so we're going to make it to lake louise and get some cheap gas there fine but the lady was all like i need you to pull forward way more so she could fill up our gas tank and i was like i'm just trying to look at your price actually real quick i heard it was pretty expensive here and i wanted to see it for myself firsthand and then she was all like oh yeah we're, we're the second most expensive in the country it was 153.9 here a liter. I think it was about 114-ish in Jasper when we were last there. But she said, we're the second most expensive in the country. Vancouver charges 170. But we just came from Vancouver not very long ago when we did our coast loop, of course. And I think it was only like maybe 128 there with the lower mainland gas prices. I feel like it might have been even cheaper than that, honestly. Maybe if you guys from the lower mainland could help me out here. But she tried to pawn it off saying Vancouver's the most expensive at 170. Anyway, that was kind of funny. Back on the road. No money for you, rip-offers. <laughs> now, before we keep heading to Lake Louise, there's actually a little spot by the Saskatchewan Crossing where you can just bump out of the National Park Rocky Mountain area where we can drone. So I'm going to get a quick drone in here and then pop back into the National Park and then on to Lake Louise. Yeah, I keep drowning in those blue eyes And you can tell me Put out all of the fire If it gets too dark oh, oh, I'll be your light Ooh, Be your light Ooh, I'll be your light Ooh, If it gets too dark oh, oh, I'll be I 
Okay, so parking is completely full up here. It's so, so busy. And even in the whole RV lot, they just have cars parked up there. So there's nowhere that we can park. There's nowhere where all of these cars that are coming up to Lake Louise with us can park. So everybody's just getting turned away. So no Lake Louise today, I guess. Yeah, it's a Monday and it's this busy. It's yeah. crazy. It and is I, summer, but. Yeah. And I hate that though when they use, they put regular cars into RV parking. Like I get that there's a limited space amount of parking, but RVs only have one lot that you've been allowed to use on a good day. And then you just go and fill it with regular cars, but it's only meant for RVs. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah, it kind of sucks, but what can you do? I guess we're just heading off to the Tunnel Mountain Campground now to go get checked in and figure out what we'll do later on today and throughout this week. So we've just arrived in here in Banff. Tunnel Mountain and the kind of village camping area is up the hill where we're going to be staying. So we figured might as well grab some groceries before we drive through town. There's a bunch of RV parking just up the street from the IGA. So we're going to walk over into town, take a quick little loop, grab some groceries and then head up to the campground. When we're at the campground, there is a bus that takes you back to downtown, so we'll do a bit more of exploring downtown later on here, but definitely want to get some groceries before we take the groceries on the bus. Alrighty, we've arrived here at our campground. We're all set up. In Tuggle Mountain here, it's just like a road. Like there's a bunch of roads all in a row and then you just kind of park on the edge of the road in your campsite and you've got a little hookup spot so we're all hooked in there and then you've got a little picnic table spot and then like there's the next road so privacy is pretty non-existent here but it is what it is and some of the campgrounds even have a really good view of the mountains so we're staying in this campsite for one night and then the other four nights over here we've got in kind of like the campground next to us with really really good views of the mountains and really excited for that one but this is kind of like last minute booking here so it is what it is but let's get dinner cooking shall we so the plan is tonight to actually make those potato carrot and onion foil packs in the oven that we didn't get to make last night and also cook up a hamburger with it and it should be really really good So that should take like probably 30 or 40 minutes or something in there. And I think we're going to try and cook the hamburgers on our little butane cooktop outside, but it's getting a little cloudy and it looks like it might rain. So we'll see what happens in about 30 minutes here. All right, update. Our veggies are almost done in there, but it started to rain outside and it's also very windy and very cold. So it looks like we'll be cooking hamburgers inside tonight. All right, so everything turned out pretty good. We got our foil packs that smell delicious. Haven't tasted it yet, but they're all fully cooked, looking delicious. And yeah, we got our hamburgers ready. For toppings, we've got red onions, Luke wanted some pickles, and then I got tomatoes. And then also we got some coleslaw because that's probably my favorite hamburger topping ever. So, so good. So we're gonna dig in, should be good. Anyway, it's still been raining on and off, so I think after that delicious dinner, we're gonna be wrapping up this video before the next one. But we actually got some kind of unexpected news today. Um, I got word from my work that they actually need me back sooner than expected, so yeah. after Banff, we'll actually be heading back home and doing like weekend and extended weekend trips with the RV still, but back to work already. Yeah, it was kind of a wild card. We expected to be on the road for another two weeks to a month, at least after all of our Banff's time's done. So we're going to go with it. But it's looking like we might be able to get out for Friday, Saturday, Sunday trips once in a while and some long weekends coming up. So we're going to just have to use Salmon Arm as a home base and make bigger camping trips for that. But we'll figure it out still. Anyway, in the next video for Banff here, we're going to be moving to the campsite we originally planned on booking. We have four nights to explore Banff with. And we think with after being here last year, it might be in one of our favorite spots for camping as well. Mm -hmm. And it's also our anniversary big day. So we're going to go to one of the restaurants in downtown Banff called the famous Grizzly House. 
super famous and we're gonna go there for fancy anniversary dinner as well. Yeah, so, I'm pretty sure we're gonna spend more money than we've ever spent on a dinner at the Grizzly House. Yeah, I think probably literally ever. But it should be worth it. Yeah, super famous, but we will see you all in the next one otherwise. Thank you for tuning in through our Ice Fields adventures and we'll catch you next vlog otherwise. See you guys. Bye friends.